What's up everyone, Trey here at Precision Transmission. We got Cody on the back side of the camera today. We have Trent's truck in the shop. Not mine, but another Trent. We're gonna be doing mine in a couple of days. Uh, this gentleman bought the same gear set that I bought because we could not get our hands on a really good gear set. And uh, the really good gear set I'm talking about is a Yukon gear. But we do have a Yukon gear here today. But what I wanna show y'all is a little bit of uh, jicky stuff. So when you set up a new ring and pinion, you get pinion shim, shim kit, all kinds of things. You know, you're going from a, if this had a 342 in it, we've got a, we're going with a 411 now, it's got a 411 in it, but just a really soft gear. But me and Cody started pulling this thing apart. And once we took our caps off, I mean, it just fell out. It just fell out. These things should not just fall out of the housing. Reason why is, is because these things have enough power to actually separate and spread, which is allowing our backlash on our ring and pinion to widen. We already have it set up, not we, um, they, whoever set this up in the beginning, um, have it as a backlash as a nine, Cody? Eight, nine? Is so it eight? about an eight or nine. Eight or nine, eight nine, eight nine, which isn't terrible because these things set up to a six to a 10. I like to set them up on a seven. If you can get a seven, you in heaven. Hey, that's pretty good. I don't know how I did that, but uh, I'm not a rhymer, but that just rhymed. But okay, so let's go over to what I really want to show y'all. So they didn't put enough pin, the shim in between to keep this thing tight in the housing. But also, they didn't even put the shims. Check this out, Cody, before I even. That's a shim. That's one, two, two shims. Well, my big shims are in here. These are supposed to be inside of those. That's supposed to be on the outside. Same thing over here. Kind of hard to see, but we're gonna, I'm gonna drop it down real quick and I'm gonna grab all this as I go so we, so we can show you. So, those aren't in the right spot. They're supposed to be. I'm trying to bring everything out in a manner. They're supposed to be in here. <laughs> so, wow, yeah. <laughs> they even got the good one, look. Wow. Now, wasn't that so hard? Is that hard, Cody? No, no. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty easy. So that's how that's supposed to go. Those shims are so tiny and so thin. When you're putting them in here, you can actually ruin that shim. That's why they have these new, beautiful locking ring shim kits that you can come and get. So that's one side. Same thing over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this down. Ugh. Same thing here. Look, I'm not changing nothing. Look at that. Sorry guys, I'm shaking this morning. Ah. Oh. Always shake. If you've been watching us, you know about it. Now I don't have to explain it. But same thing here. That goes in here. What are they doing? So and I mean, this guy says it's only got like 2,000 miles on it. There's no miles on these gears, supposedly. And look how nasty this is, too. I mean, they didn't even clean it. I, I don't know who did it. We don't ever say names. I really don't care. I just really want to take care of my customer. So what we have is, Cody, come on over here. Y'all are probably wondering, I got a couple knots uh, on my face uh, yesterday. I leaned up underneath a tire and caught my toolbox at the same time, so I'm living with it for a couple weeks. It was, uh, it would have been a good one to catch on camera. It would have probably won. Played a little basketball with the head. Played a little, ba a lot of basketball with the head. So right here, guys, we've got, I'm not gonna touch it much. It doesn't really matter because I'm gonna be cleaning it up anyways, but we've got a really, really nice Yukon gear here, which is a lot harder metal. I have never had a problem with a Yukon gear. You get these odd brand gears, you know, and stuff to where they don't come, I mean, in a box that is just brown. So you don't know what you're getting. 
uh, companies really don't even tell you what you're getting. So uh, we kind of are really skeptical skeptical on what we buy and the parts that we get. So customer did get a hold of a Yukon bearing kit, all the goodies. So we're gonna do this right. And he actually bought me a set of gears too. Like I am very thankful for this gentleman. I don't know if it's because we got the same name or not, but I got the same gears in my truck as his set up correctly and am having a gear wine and pitting at the teeth. Not like so much this gentleman when you get on it, it actually starts gritting. It's like, it feels like it's trying to jump over the teeth. I wish I'd have took y'all on a ride, but we're gonna get this out and uh, get some things rolling, get this new gear on here, see what pinion shim they have, and we'll get back. Got our old ring gear and posi out. Um, this is not good, guys. This is not good at all. So we were just hoping we were gonna put new gears on our Yukon posi, but when we got our old bearings off, that were already destroyed. It's look, it looks like once they got the bearings on this Yukon Posse, they dropped it. Because that does not happen unless you drop it. Don't ask me how I know. But anyways, so what they did is they put that on, didn't clean out the rear end. It circulated metal. The bearing spun on here instead of inside the race in which now we have a ruined posi that has less than 2,000 miles on it so we're gonna have to call the customer tell him about his previous job that someone did they ruined everything i mean seriously less than 2,000 miles on this stuff guys that's ridiculous it's seriously and i'm not even trying to be rude about it but if you were if you don't know what you're doing don't touch someone's car because this is twice you just cost this customer that's 500 dollars. gears another 200 bearing kit i mean you cost this guy almost a thousand dollars in parts in less than two thousand miles because you didn't know what you were doing so that being said guys i'm not trying to be rude but don't touch it if you don't know what you're doing so we're gonna get on the phone with the customer get us a posse here and uh we'll see you on a couple days everyone trent here cody behind the camera again so we're a little behind on filming we've just been really 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 busy we've had travelers in um cody's been working on this housing got everything up clean for me and i've been teaching him how we do a rear end the process it takes and kind of where to start so this thing's been messed with once before had a 342 gear in it they switched it over to a 411. When they switched it over to a 411, they really didn't know what they were doing in the pinion shim, your shims on the side to set your backlash back and forth and destroyed the Yukon Posi, his brand new one that he just had less than 2,000 miles and brand new gears less than 2,000 miles. This stuff was caked. If you've been watching since the beginning, you'll see that. So, but what we found, I started pulling the pinion apart and getting the bearings apart. This was in between the two bearings of the pinion. So anytime hit a bump, this would have went in a bearing. Oh my, it would have been bad. We'd have, you'd have heard some noises, definitely. So, but what we have here is we've been working with it. I've got, so your factory 40, or your factory 342 shim is a 36 on your pinion, okay? We have changed it to a 43. So the shim in between the bearing and your pinion is a 43 now from a 36. So add that up, quite a bit of difference there. So we've set that, got everything without your crush leaf. Do not crush them. You wanna set a good, nice preload on your pinion without a crush leaf. And then you're gonna come in here, and we're gonna start working this back and forth with our nice shim kit. I've had this down. How many times, Cody, have I had this down? Uh, quite a few already. Quite a few, quite a few. I'd um, say about five times, yeah. probably. Yeah, easy. They definitely, it takes some time, especially when um, you're starting from pretty much scratch, square one. So we've got everything how we like. This is a five cut gear. What it means is we are height on the inside of the ring gear 
and on the outside of the ring gear are different heights. We got two cut, the tooth is the same height from the inside of the ring gear to the outside of the ring gear, okay? So, and it does matter on backlash. If you got a two cut, you're only gonna be setting it up to a three to six. If you got a five cut, which we have here, we're gonna be setting up to a six to a 10. So, that being said, seven, seven. If you get a nice seven, that's what we like to look for. Was that the win? Okay guys, so we got some wind coming on here today. We're seriously, but yeah, the wind's here. Have 60 to 70 mile per hour winds all day long, power outages, so um, pray for us guys. Hopefully we don't lose power today. Uh, but back where we were, um, we are setting up our backlash. Took me a little bit but we've got a good seven is heaven. You set it up from a six to a 10, everybody's gonna be like, well, that's kind of on your tight side. Well, yeah, it is. But this thing's gonna get wear. It's, it, you're gonna get wear on it. So what's that gonna do? If you set it on the loose side of it, Cody, it's gonna get looser. So, uh huh. yeah, so your backlash is gonna get wider, which can cause a whine over time. So, We've noticed, seriously, if you get an eight on this, you go drive it, it could have a hair of a line. And then the later and the more miles you go, it gets louder and louder and louder. But a seven, set it up as seven, it's really nice. And I don't know why we've always thought seven's heaven, but a seven is a really good number when it comes to doing your backlash. And I'm gonna show you right now. See if I can get in here. You see that, Cody? You see there, zero, five, six, seven, zero, five, six, seven. So let me pull this down. So after you check your backlash, you get a good, nice backlash. Let me set this right here. I'm gonna step by you, Cody, so I can get it out of the way. Hey, okay. so now Hey. I gotta pick on Cody. Y'all ever seen a magnet just turn off? <laughs> I told Cody to turn the magnet off yesterday. He thought I was playing with him. But Harbor Freight, uh, I'm sure you could probably get it from a lot of different places. Uh, these are really nice. Your backlash, your gauge, you can set, I can't remember what this gauge is called. But uh, yeah, you can actually uh, turn it on and off. So guys, you can turn the magnet on and off if you didn't know that. I did not. It's like that guy no. on Big Time. Did you know? So, okay. I Back. felt a little on the doo doo, -doo side <laughs> yesterday. When I figured that out, I'm like, great. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, guys, so we've got a pattern ran in this. We're just gonna go, I'm gonna redo my pattern here so we can show y'all it show up. Hey. Hey. Is that the master? Master. There he is. Hey, good morning. I fixed to check this work my son's doing, Cody. Uh-oh. We're going to check both sides. We ran into issues on gears in the past. Not on a Yukon gear, but it could be wider or narrower on one side of the backlash and not have the right pattern that you really want. So I did re-go and uh, set this again. So. Yeah, anytime you get an odd pattern or an odd spacing like that, you always want to set your clearance to the, the tightest spot on the ring gear. So if it's 10 on this side, 6 on this side, and it's supposed to be set at 8, you need to set it at 8 on the tight side. That way you don't get it touching the gear when it comes around. So Most definitely. Get you a nice little shorty screwdriver, guys, Phillips. We're going to stick it in the oak bolt. You can get your hand. We're gonna be very careful. This is sharp. This will cut you instantly. You start going around, it'll slice you like a knife. We wanna put just a little bit of a preload. We just wanna press our hand right here and we're gonna go around. I go until I wear myself out the first way and I go back the other way, wear myself out that way. 
you just want to get a good pattern, go around many times as you can. You don't want it clunking back and forth. And man. Nice and on the center of our pull side. Oh, getting a good full tooth on our co side. I think the master's gonna really like this one. Hey, if I like it, he's gonna like it. So he's, he taught me everything. And uh, I'm handing it down here to Cody. Uh, this guy's, we're not around very often, or not around very often, but there's very selective of us that know how to do it and do it right. You know, no, I didn't show you everything. Um, there's tricks to the trade, most definitely, but here we go here. We got a nice good seven backlash. We got a nice pattern on our ring gear. So what we're gonna do now is, I'll let Cody kind of slow, I mean, not really, <laughs> we're really busy, honestly. But trying to teach Cody about this, I'll let him video the process, retaking it back out, setting the shim, and going like that. So y'all guys, don't go anywhere. We're gonna get this down real quick and uh, we'll show you how we get a sham. So, like promised, um, we're gonna show y'all a little bit about and how we get this posi out and third member out after we get it in. So, we talked about how loose they had this thing. Cody, look, I don't even have my end caps on and I mean, you couldn't pull that thing out of there if you wanted to with your hands which is a good thing because if you get these things loose to where they're just poo -poo in and out, falling out, when you go to give them full acceleration, I would say, or a higher acceleration, it's gonna try to pull the carrier apart and it will. And that's one of the reasons why we were having the cutting at the teeth. Low RPM, cruising, you didn't feel anything in this truck. When you got on it, it sounded like it was trying to run over itself because how loose this was and how wide it made the backlash. So it started cutting at it. And you could tell because it was like a, it felt like a shutter. So we've got this out where we've got our caps off. And I'm gonna show y'all how we get this out of here, okay? Same thing, y'all guys at home, you know, you can do the same thing, so gonna be very careful we're not damaging anything we're just gonna come right in here to this Yukon Posi and we're just gonna I call it I guess pumping it we're just gonna pump the screwdriver but you just want to pay attention and it you see it's coming out just like that so now I'm gonna be nice and easy with it Set my screwdriver down, grab this hand, this hand, grab our shims. We're just gonna walk it out. Make sure you set this down there, this one like here. That's what the third member's like right here. That's how hard it should be for you to get it out at home if you're doing this yourself. So if you don't know what you're doing, guys, don't tackle this at home. You don't want to do it over twice and it's not fun for me to have to start all over after you've done it i mean we've been doing it for a very 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 long time but it has its tricks to its trade definitely so that being said cody you can still video i'm gonna get this yoke off of here now that's a screwdriver well that's a screwdriver hey i got a better one than that Now that's a screwdriver. <laughs> I like your flathead there. Thanks, sir. Got it at Target. Yeah, it was on sale. Just kidding. Robert, Maco Tools, thank you, sir. I've had this thing for good, whew, man, years. Good five, six, seven years. And going strong. Okay. Back where we were. That's on there. Pretty good. Alright guys, so ran back there and we got this nice little heavy duty puller. 
We're gonna pull our yoke off of there. No sense in beating on it and ruining it when it's just this easy. Watch, come here Cody, come on this side to pull this off of here. So we're just gonna let our top relax. When it comes and tightens up, it's just gonna grab it. Just like this, and we're gonna grab, hold it with our hand. Just like that. That's how you get your yoke off. You don't wanna sit here and beat on it, beat on it, beat on it, cause then you just ruin your end, or you smack this, and this is your dust cover with another seal. You don't wanna do that, so. Do it the right way or don't do it at all. Okay, so we got that out. Now, we're gonna, I gotta have Cody, he's gonna grab this. How we get these out, people are probably wondering, he, he can uh, probably grab hey, it. After you get your pinion in, we gotta knock it out with two hammers. So you're gonna get a round tip hammer here, and a good hammer, we're gonna come to the front, look at the front real quick, Cody, so I can show him what I'm doing. We're not damaging anything by doing this. This is taking actually the load off a lot of things, and we're gonna be smacking it just like that. So let me grab some safety glass. Ready, Cody? Yes, sir. So, Cody, show him that end there. We didn't do anything to that end. Everything looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is, Cody, did you steal my shim, sir? No. <laughs> Man, we had two of them. The crush washer? Oh, there we are. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Crush sleeves. That's where it goes. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Now Cody's going to stick that pinion back in there, and then I'm going to put my bearing back on. So I've got a nice chisel. Everything's still nice and greased up. We're going to Chisel. Hammer. You're going to be tapping on the bearing nice and easy, nothing crazy. Cody's holding that in there. And it's going to start getting tight. As you can hear. And it's, yeah, it's on there. And then we're going to finish it with our impact we're gonna get it close and then we will be taking a torque wrench and we'll be setting a preload so but one thing let me tell you all guys and it happens all the time i've done it when i was younger don't forget to put your seal in before you put your yoke on it's so easy to do it don't ask me how but it is i promise um I guarantee you, it's probably happened to a lot of folks out there. It's an accident, but don't make that accident. Got our 3M yellow glue. Somebody was saying this is like a weather strip uh, glue, but let me tell you, it works good for seals. Shaking nice and great today, like always. I think it just helps me put the glue on just that much better. <laughs> put the cap on. As you noticed, I put it on the edge there, so when I put my seal in, the glue actually goes all the way on. If you put it up here, your glue didn't really do anything except seal at the top. We want uh, it to seal all the way down. And then also, I get it in there, I turn it. And then let me grab a dead blow hammer. Cody, will you hold that? Thank you, sir. Man, you're awesome, Cody. I don't know <laughs> seriously what I do without you sometimes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, so Cody's sir. gonna hold that hold that seal. He did for me. We're just gonna um have it out of edge. Here I'll do it like this. Do it like this. So I've got it tighter over here, further out over here. Dead blow, no real hammer. like that so you get a, you get a metal hammer in here you're messing up your seal beating it all up and we don't want to do that 
So now it's time for our good old yolk. away with the impact but not be tight and we're not tightening it down okay lock tight on the nut and on your we're treating this yoke like it's our worst enemy in pain just don't want them to come apart guys i've seen that too many times not at our shop but it happens and it's not not worth it we don't like redos so i'm gonna bring i've got my impact all the way down on low i can read my socket here by the numbers we're gonna get it close i'm gonna, I'm gonna get this out of there okay Maybe the right way. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna get this out of there. We're gonna get that rock out of there. Okay, so now we're gonna have to turn the impact up because now we are trying to crush the crust leaf. We're gonna watch that socket. gone so we want to actually it is gone okay but it's too loose right here. that's not gonna work so what we're gonna do we're gonna kind of get it close then we're gonna go back there we're gonna grab a torque wrench we're gonna be setting our preload okay so we'll kind of show you all that here shortly so too loose it just free spins way too easy not enough to load Same thing. You never, never just smack your pinion. We're gonna make sure we don't have any play. So you see that actually loosened it up when I smacked it. So there was a little bit of play in there. So now we're gonna come back. We're gonna get that. It's getting a drag on it, but. I'm going to go back there, we're going to grab the torque wrench guys, and we will be right back with you so we can show you the drag preload, what we're looking for. We've got our inch pound torque wrench right here, we've got it set to zero. If this was old bearings and we took this off, put it back together for a seal, we would be looking for a 12 inch pound on the preload. Um, now since we have brand new bearings, brand new everything, we are looking for a 20 inch pound preload. I haven't touched it since we just got off the camera. So like I was telling you, I knew we were getting close, but we weren't there. So you can see here, look, where we are getting a load. Starting to get a load on it, but nowhere close. I mean, we're only like at a three. Used is 12, new 20 inch pounds. Remember, inch pounds, not foot pounds. Totally different. So let me get uh, more couple dugga duggas on this and we're gonna get close same thing you want to get something or you want to mark your socket to where you know how far this thing is turning I'm gonna do it again 
again. We're getting there. You don't want to go too far because if you go too far, I mean, luckily I got a second crush sleeve, but I don't want to do it again. Same for y'all at home. You don't want to do it twice. That's a lot of work. You always want to tap that just to make sure. We're going to do the same thing. Not really moved. Okay. All right. So I'm going to really work it now. I'm going to quit being scared. doing that like we're saying showing you we're not doing any damage to our pinion that's why we're double hitting using two hammers we're looking for a 20. nope getting close this goes by twos so we're at what are we about at cody it looks like we're about at a 10. Yes, we're gonna have sir. 10 20 30 so we're at about a 10. One little bit more. spins in this thing. You tap it. Make sure we are sorry I don't have my safety glasses on guys. I was closing my eyes. Make sure that we're uh right there. And like I said I think we can hang. And then you always want to check here. See, look, so we moved. We'll make sure we zero that out. We're gonna check it again. So guys, guess what? That's good to go. That is how you set the preload on your pinion. The correct way. You out there? Yeah. yeah. I want you to check this too. To part of my, we parted my hair. I mean, did it? <laughs> so we've got a 20 inch pound preload on this. Made sure my gauge was at a zero. And we're showing them a nice 19 to 20 preload. There you go. And that's nice and set. So that you heard it. Mm -hmm. really nice. Feels good. So guys, there you go. That's how you set the preload on your pinion. We'll get on the back side. We'll get our carrier and uh, third member back in. We'll see y'all shortly. Cody finally got the button pressed. I'm sitting here smiling. <laughs> I took a picture of him. <laughs> uh, so we're on the back side of our rear end now. We've got a good preload of a 19 to 20 inch pounds um, on the load. We have our, our third member down. We've got our shims picked. Everything's nice. We were at a seven before we put our crush sleeve back in it. Okay, so when you go to put this stuff back together, you go put it back originally how you had it, and we're gonna check it again because your crush leaf can actually change the depth of how the, where the pinion sits. So, like we did last time, show y'all how we do this. Some people put it in a spreader. If you're nice and easy with this stuff, you can do it just like this at home. It's not easy, don't get me wrong, it's tight. You want to make sure you're in your in between your pinion and your teeth because you don't want your teeth to come connected together. So we're getting in there. Let me uh, 
So what can happen is your races and shims kind of come out like this as you're pushing it in. So what we do is we just, here, watch this, Cody. Come here, because that one moved. It was a good a good shot. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. here. It's not gonna move much, but enough to where I can push that in there. You ready? Kind of, we're gonna be looking right in here. Did it move at all? Very, Maybe very a paper thin. Paper thin is a couple thousands, guys, and that's what we're looking for. Let me get my shim in there with it. Okay. We're just nice and easy tapping on our races. Your races are so hard. You are not gonna touch anything. You're not gonna ruin nothing. You're gonna put dots and stuff on this chisel before you ever put an imprint in on your race. So, but what you do wanna be careful for is them soft shims here, okay? So I've got an old Matco three inch extension. I had it forever. I'll just take the little edge here. Run our shims in nice and easy, just like that. We'll go to this side, same thing. Works good. We did not mess up our shims. Everything is really nice. I think we still got a good backlash. <laughs> Sounds good. So we're gonna put these on there real quick. Boom, snug them. We're gonna check our backlash, pull them back down, lock tight them, do our low torque on them, and uh, they'll be good to go. But we wanna double check them first. I don't wanna put it all in there, tighten it down, get it locked tighted, and. Sorry about that, guys. Everybody thinks they're race car drivers around here. Race but car. <laughs> race car. But, anyways, as I was saying, um, you don't want to lock tight this down, torque it down, and you get here to your backlash and you re got, got to reset it. So don't get ahead of yourself. Got our impact down on two, so a good load. I can just. These Milwaukee fuel impacts, guys, they're plenty enough. That 3 8 will break that bolt off just like that on high. So. He keeps trying to steal it from me, but I don't know. Cody bought the new one. This is the new one. I've got the old design, the very, very first design, and it's not as strong as this one, and I'm falling in love with this one just because of uh, the uh, lighting system on the front of it here. Good lights here versus one light down here on mine, and you got a big old long schnoz, as I would say. We go nose. So we're gonna don't forget to turn We're your, gonna magnet, turn your off. magnet off guys Cody never knew you can turn magnet off but you can <laughs> I got I love you dude gotta give you a hard time yep hey I learned something new yeah hey if we're not picking on each other we don't like you I know you can demagnetize stuff but I didn't know you yeah. can just turn it off turn it off <laughs> I love it okay so we're not touching so we're gonna scoot it up just a little bit man you hear me saying scoot it up yeah, it's a good day guys we're enjoying our day i love kind of teaching and showing cody a little bit and everybody else <clears throat> so i will go back and explain we are looking for a six to ten i love and been doing this for a good 10 years seven is heaven when it comes to this stuff because you're going to get some wear in the gear See, so just by me pulling that pinion out, putting the crush sleeve in it, putting it all back in, we're to a nine. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pull this back down. We might not video that stuff, but I'm gonna switch a couple shims up and uh, we'll get back to you and I'll show you. We're gonna get back to uh, Get back to our seven. Yeah. 
out of nine, eight and a half to nine, not acceptable in my book. So uh, we'll get this back down. I'm not gonna let Cody video it. I'm just gonna try to keep him paying attention to this, teach him how to do it, help me, help him. And uh, we're gonna knock this out and we'll see y'all shortly. What's up guys? So hope you didn't go far and if you did, get back to that camera and sit back down. We're not done yet. Just kidding. But we're really not. So we did. We got our crush sleeve in here. We got everything set back up as is and our backlash changed. It got really wide on the outside edge of what it's supposed to be, a six to a 10. So if it's not a seven, it's not heaven. So I promise you guys, if you go <clears throat> out and if you have just put it all the way together without checking your backlash back on it, you could have had a wine. I mean, there's all kinds of issues you could have had. It could have been um, actually cutting at the teeth instead of grabbing like it did. I did not mark my pattern on it to see what the actual eight to nine was, but I'm telling you now, it would have been no good. It would have, it would have changed things up tremendously. So what we did is we moved some shims around and uh, we actually, so it was wide. We moved everything this way. We pulled some out of here, put this one over here. Caprende? Caprende, okay. So this is where we're at now. I, I haven't checked it, so we're all gonna see at the same time I'm praying it's a seven 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 is heaven baby I love it rear ends they are they take uh, some time I mean I've been doing this 10-15 years and uh, it's taken me all this years to actually figure out which way to go, how to do it, how not to get confused because you can get really confused on these things really easy. So, Cody, what do you think? I think that's beautiful. Very pretty. Very pretty. All right, well, let's mark our pattern real quick while we got them all on here. And we're gonna, we've got a little bit of pattern on marking pattern on there but I'm gonna put a little bit more and then you get get about four or five teeth on the pull and coast side and go all the way around on those five teeth and that wind is getting it isn't it Cody yeah it is no, the welding helmet's right there, Dad, on the creeper. Our pattern, or our marking compound, all set. Phillips screwdriver, a little shorty. We're gonna put a stab it in our yoke here. Again, be careful because these teeth are very sharp. It will cut your palm. And we just want to put a little, do a little press, and go all the way around. Back the other way. Oh, getting a little tired. Ah. And then once you put that load on it, it's a little bit harder, harder to turn it. So that looks really good. I'm actually gonna grab it with a rag and I'm gonna do this. So I'm pushing and turning, pushing and turning. We'll go the opposite way. Hold on. So guys, that there, we have a really nice good pattern again. Everything looks really good. Our pattern, it's almost right in the middle on our pull side and if you look at our coast side, same thing. I mean, looks really well. That's how you set up a rear end, the correct way. Little bit of work, time consuming, but if you do it once and right, you'll never do it again. Make sure you get a good gear as well. That's a big step. So um, that's that on that part. All we have to do is, is I have to pull my caps back off my third member is going to stay in here. We put a little uh, Loctite on there, nothing crazy, just enough to hold it and uh, tighten it down with the torque wrench. And then 
We're gonna get our eight millimeter out here. We're gonna get our pin out. We're gonna get our axles back in, and we'll see y'all soon. So don't go anywhere. All right, guys. So we are applying our blue Loctite to our bolts. I have <laughs> install installed. Put some Loctite actually on the edge of our holes there too as well. If you got a dead end hole, you put Loctite on your bolt. It really does not work that way. Um, you can go look up. They did a Loctite video, and I got my caps on backwards. But somebody was actually did a Loctite video and showing how um, it works in a clear container. I've seen that. That was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Talking Empty hole versus a full hole. Yeah. How talking to, about your full hole, your closed hole. You put it more in in the hole. That yes, way sir. it pushes us up. Yep. Because if you just put it on there, it's going to push it push right, it right back up. Yes, sir. And it, none of the Loctite even goes in the hole. Yeah, that was really cool. You've seen the same thing I, I watched. Some lady doing it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're just going to tug that down with that. Got all here. Old style torque wrench. Don't get your hand behind that because that'll hurt. So we're going to set it to uh, 55. We're going to blow away the good day, guys. Hopefully not. I got rocks in my pocket, so hopefully not. Hopefully no power outages. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest deal. Okay, so we're going for a 55. Y'all ready? You want to make one good motion with it. You don't want to go back. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. And this is foot pounds. We're not at inch pounds anymore. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. So that just tells you, guys, this bad boy right here, your Milwaukee feel on level two is close to a fifty torque. Pound torque. Just letting y'all know that. So, I actually wanted to, I need to look at, see if they say the torque levels on those, if what one is, what two is, what three is. So, I'd like to know that. But, okay. So now, I'm gonna get this here all eight millimeter out. Yeah. Our eight millimeter out. Maybe. Put my cart back to me. Set our pin to the side. We don't, this pin is still good. We've got new pin, new housing, new everything. So it's all getting brand new stuff here. We're gonna push our pin out. It's just gonna slide out right, nice and easy. Turn it a little bit further. We're gonna start getting our axles in. All right, guys, so got our big axle cleaned up here, nice and beautiful. But as we can see here, oh, cool. we got some run marks on where the axle go, or where the bearing goes on the axle where our seal goes. Scotch brat, just Scotch brat, guys. I don't have nothing else. That's why Scotch Bright is your friend. Brand new. Like you've never been ran. Nice. That's what you want. So we're able to save this axle. Everything looks really good. That's one. I'll get a rag, wipe that off here shortly. And then we've got two. Same thing. Like magic. Isn't that crazy? And that's just shiny. I mean, it's a little bit of a more 
shinier spot. This is a harder axle, so don't get me wrong, Scotch Rite's not gonna take it all out. But you don't wanna get a piece of sandpaper in there, and then it's gonna ruin everything. So just a little bit of Scotch Rite will go a long ways, guys. So I'm out of breath. I'm gonna go grab a drink. We'll be right back. So we're wiped off, we're greased up. Want a little bit of grease on our seal, but not a lot on, we don't want anything on the outside here because that does attract dust. And over time, we'll ruin a seal. I seen that too, I tried. Yeah, it was... All right. Okay. So we've got it pushed in. So there is an ABS sensor here and a sleeve that slides onto your axle shaft at the same time we are putting everything in. So now we will grab our here C-clips. Good small magnet. We're gonna put these bad boys in there. Last time we had issues, but hopefully we won't this time. Looks like we're gonna, but all you gotta do is get your chisel small little hammer we're gonna be careful to not touch our tooth on our ring gear that's gonna go right in there just like that guys and then we're gonna just come right here nice handy dandy screwdriver don't fall over Cody pull our axle out that axles in and secure good to go do the same thing for this one we don't need we don't want any on the outside because that does that starts collecting dust just like that Out there pretty far Yeah, kind of put it, you can't put it in like this look it won't go so you gotta eh, turn it just a little bit get it to the side and then still it's not going to want to go because our sleeves of the abs system and uh what we do again chisel hammer nice and easy just like that and we're gonna take our pry bar and do the same thing. You can watch that snug up in there. Be careful, keep your finger out, then just like that. Nice and easy. And we're gonna, you don't wanna go over here and turn your axle without your pin because it could try to turn your spider gears and it'd be offsetting the hole and then you can't get it in. Just like that. Same thing. Dead blow. Nice and easy. Put a lot of grease on this stuff because it is actually kind of lubricated. It just makes everything ten times slippier and harder to handle.
more time. I think I knocked it in too far that time. <laughs> uh oh, it's gonna be that day. There we are, okay. So nice, our bolt's in. <laughs> And on this nice little eight millimeter bolt, we're just gonna leave this down long low. I'm gonna, it's got Loctite on it, so just one little nice dugga, and it should be good to go. You don't wanna break that bolt, I promise. It'll be the worst day of your life if you break that. So, okay, that's how you set up a rear end, guys. I mean, there's really not much more. Um, we are gonna clean a little bit of this off, and we're gonna get the cover on it, get everything nice and sealed customer has a nice pretty cover we're going to be putting on as well and after you install one of these you do put a um, limited slip friction modifier but you do not use a synthetic fluid anymore you go to a straight 80 90 80 90 80 90 so guys Pay attention to what fluid goes in this stuff because it's not going to be the original stuff that the, trans, or the transmission, the rear end came out with. So just pay attention, okay? Um, other than that, uh, we're going to get our ABS sensors back in here just like this. We got our drums on. I'm going to get this thing rolling. We'll show you all that. Um, almost lunchtime, so. Y'all guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, so we are at our moment of truth. We've got everything back in, all brand new fluid, limited slip, um, 80, 90, no synthetic. We did run into some issues with the cover on the rear differential right there. It did not have a fill plug in the cover so i was not able to put it on because there is not a fill plug in the housing here your later models or your earlier models had a fill plug on the passenger side which allowed for you to put a cover that does not have a train a fill plug in the cover but since the fill plug is in the cover there's no drain. You take that cover off, put another cover on that does not have a fill plug, you're in trouble. And that's what we ran into. So we're gonna start this thing on the lift and it's just gonna be free spinning. We wanna get a little bit of heat in our ring and pinion before you just set it down and start pushing some weight. It's always good to get a good run pattern first. So I'm jumping on the lift here. I've done everything to this truck. We've built it, we built the transmission, I've tuned it, and we built the rear end. Let y'all listen to it real quick. It hasn't been started in a couple days, so I'm gonna let it kind of settle down before I go to put it in gear. I didn't do the work to this one, but I did do the tuning. So this thing's gonna work really good when the customer gets it back on the engine side and the transmission side. And the rear end job is done correctly as well. So I'm gonna set y'all down real quick and we're gonna get them wheels spinning and we're gonna go in a forward motion first, and then we're gonna go in a reverse motion get some heat in it and then we're gonna go drive it uh, so we've got our truck in gear I've got it all the way down in low turn it nice and smooth like should we're gonna let this roll for a couple minutes and then we're gonna go the other way we're gonna put it in reverse let it roll a couple minutes then we'll put it on the ground and then we'll go drive it. Sounds pretty good. All right, so we're in our reverse 
gear going backwards now gonna let it go for another couple minutes we'll get this thing down we'll go on a drive okay, i promise y'all ride we'll see y'all in the truck okay everyone we're gonna try to do this as safe as can be cody had a family emergency today my dad is taking care of the shop while i am going on a test drive we're gonna see if we can uh go drive this bad boy and truck's a little noisy so we're gonna have to really be listening for it if we do have a wine but i don't think we are i think we're gonna be good just want to be nice and easy with it nothing yet which that's good i mean i said i don't plan on it don't worry guys that was my screwdriver falling over there but working good so far really nice and quiet i promise y'all guys if you've ever heard a rear end whine you know what we're listening for and you'd be able to hear it inside the camera in the vehicle okay so it never fails when you're doing something good the camera dies so we've got the truck back in the shop the rear end worked really really good guys it did um i drove it all the way down our normal route and back we're gonna let this thing cool off for the rest of the day it is five o'clock here we are shutting it down if y'all guys enjoyed please go give us a huge thumbs up go subscribe to that youtube channel because we, this is just the beginning to something big we are going to educate you daily on how to do different things in the automobile world so don't miss out guys we'll see you on the next one